All right. What is up? Miles Becker here, milesbecker.com. And we're doing an office hour together. So we're going to jump in, answer some questions. I have been pre-polling my email list, many of the questions. So uh, that I have a list of questions I'm going to be working on from there. If you're not on my email list, that means that you don't have the opportunity to get these kinds of question polls when they pop up. That also means you haven't seen my free seven step course, how I went from side hustle to full-time income, making millions of dollars online. You can get that at milesbeckler.com forward slash free dash course. And then also in the description of this video, uh, you'll see that I've linked to some of my most common and popular playlists that teach everything from Facebook advertising to affiliate marketing. A lot of the foundational stuff is already done, right? I've got 540 videos on here. So welcome. Uh, I just want to go check in the chat, make sure you can hear me and see me. Okay. I believe everything's working well, but it's always good to double check before we dive in. Then I got a list of questions and we will be bouncing in and out of the chat to make sure things are good. Um, all kinds of people on here already. Good to see you guys all. Um, Brent, good to see you here. Alan, Suna, uh, Dwight Norris is in. Uh, Matt, what's up, mate? Got you on there. Uh, rag the nuts off, teaching people how to break and fix remote control airplanes. Um, Justin, Peter, cool. So I'm gonna assume that everything, Sache, thank you very much for the heads up. So everything is good on that. Let me arrange my screens here. So. We left off, where did I leave off? Right there. So um, Tammy Poppy is the next question. So Tammy Poppy says, and this is a brilliant question. And really before I get into the questions, whether you have a specific question or not, you can learn so much by other people's questions. There's four quadrants of knowledge, right? There's what we know we know, there's what we don't know that we know, there's what we know that we don't know, and then there's what we don't know that we don't know. And oftentimes, not oftentimes, the reason you haven't gotten to where you want to be yet is because there's something you don't know that you don't know, right? If you're constantly looking for what you know you don't know, that's what we think is the problem. But the problem is always what you don't know that you don't know. And that's where these kinds of Q&A sessions can come in so powerfully because somebody will ask a question about something you don't even know about and it'll enlighten you to something that you didn't know that you don't know. And then now you know that you don't know it and you can go find it out and you can figure it out. Um, I've gained so so much value being a lurker in these kinds of Q&A things for well over a decade inside forums. I read other people's questions. I read all the answers and, and literally that is how I have self-educated myself. So good on you for being here in the self-education world. Back to Tammy Poppy's question, number one. So how do I really know if my idea is viable? Have you ever had an idea and you're like, man, that feels like a good idea. How do I know? If you've had that experience, hit the thumbs up button so I know. So she says, for 22 years, I've gone on girls getaways each year. She loves to share her experiences and inspire other women to go on girls getaways. So she's found this thing in her life that adds value to her life. And now she wants to share that with others. So she says she can do keyword research, but it doesn't always give clues into the searcher's intent, which is very true. There's enough search volume on girls getaways with low competition. There doesn't appear to be anyone in this niche, which seems like a red flag that it might be too good to be true. What it is often in these situations is, maybe people aren't calling it what you're looking at it as, right? The words you're using and what you and your friends have called it for years and years isn't exactly what it's called. Um, I know that women's retreats are super powerful. Uh, women's empowerment retreats are super powerful. They happen in Sedona where I've got a place uh, all the time. So it's, it's, it's language patterning can often be the difference, right? Uh, so how can you be relatively confident it's a viable market without spending three years blogging first? You're willing to put in the time and the work, but you need more assurance it's going to work. So my question for you, Tammy, in this situation is what exactly are you trying to sell? Are you trying to do these events as a kind of empowerment event or um, where you're actually going to sell spaces? You're going to rent a, a 20 bedroom mansion and you're going to bring in 20 different women and then you're going to kind of host a, a mastermind type thing. If that's your goal, what I would do beforehand is, can I build a list of these women who are interested in empowering their lives? The cool thing about building an audience and a list is that you don't, you're not limited to this one idea. Okay. I think it's a great idea, but I also think it's very high up the value ladder. 
I think this is often what would what I would call a um, a back end sale versus a front end sale, and you have a lot of opportunity for other things to offer an audience interested in that. Let me give you a real world example from my life. So I've run two abundant circle events. The first one I rented a thirty four thousand square foot mansion in Thailand. It was two swimming pools. It was uh, twenty three bedrooms and a staff of chef. This that the other. It cost me fifteen thousand dollars or so to rent it for a few nights. Um, and I brought up 20 entrepreneurs. Okay. So I was able to fill that, but it was very challenging for me. I had to really rely on my network because I didn't really have my YouTube channel going. I didn't have it going at all when I was marketing it. I didn't have an email list. I didn't have much blog traffic and I just wasn't known. Okay. I didn't have an audience. The second year, it got a little bit easier. I did it twice. Now I'm working on another one, but at this point I've got a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. I've got over 10,000 subscribers on my email list. My website gets 40,000 subscribers per month. A lot of these individuals are new, right? They're, they're getting started and they're, they're wanting to know the first steps. So it's not for them, but out of it, I've got a lot of people doing 30, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollars a month in my audience, relatively speaking, right? So it's for them. And I mentioned this because if you've noticed, I promote lots of smaller products that are going to help people get to the point where they can afford a 5,000 to $10,000 five day trip because not everyone is in a position to do that. So what I'm going, what I'm, what I'm helping you see is that you need to build an audience one way or another, whether this product idea that you have, which is just a product idea, it's not a business idea yet. It's just a product idea, whether or not that is viable, you'll learn over time. But once you have the attention and once you have kind of an audience of women who are interested in that, there's actually a lot of things that you can help them with. There's a lot of services. There's virtual coaching that you can offer them. There's courses. There's, there's connecting them with other people's courses, right? There's six week modulated lessons. There's, there's small group coaching. There's a lot of ways you can monetize that audience. And one of those ways would be putting on these types of events. So ultimately, can you build an email list of women? who are interested in improving themselves, right? The personal development space is still an insanely large space. The info marketing world is a hundred billion plus dollar per year industry. The numbers work. Women want to improve their lives, right? There's a, a lack of fulfillment that happens when we realize we've we've got the good job and the good money and, and we still don't have happiness, right? We've got the kids, the family, we did everything everybody told us to do. And I still don't feel fulfilled. Um, that hollowness inside is normal for every human being uh, in the Western civilized world, seen in a lot of developing countries that are extremely impoverished. They actually don't have that, which is kind of amazing to me. They've found fulfillment in their their life situation. And we've, we've seemed to have lost that in some senses in the Western world. So sometimes you just got to move forward, right? This what That is what being an entrepreneur is. We take on the risk. We put in the time, the money, the effort now to be of service to other people with the kind of belief that we will generate a return on said investment at some point in the future. But just I would detach yourself from this one product. And that's the freedom. How can you build an audience? How can you build a list of these people who want effectively what you're giving them, right? You're thinking all about that experience. I want to sell the thing, but they don't really care about the thing. They want the result. And what's that result that they want? It's probably empowerment. It's probably fulfillment, more happiness. Maybe it's professional advancement. And when you focus on helping them achieve that, there's a lot of different directions you can go. And then it's just about having the attention and the trust of your audience in order to go down that path. So, um, all kinds of people on here. Um, questions are popping in. Uh, hot and sunny Austria. Man, I've heard the heat wave in, in Europe right now is crazy. And I've had rain. I think Denver, Colorado, the mountains above Denver just got two feet of snow three days ago up in the mountains. So um, I, I don't know what's going on, man. I'm not going to say the climate's changing or anything, but maybe... It is. Uh, question number two, Hector asks, how to rank in local SEO for local service businesses and rank and rent websites? Um, let's just be honest here. That That is uh, essentially a one-line question to attempt to get an entire business model. For those of you not familiar with this business model, which is why I even left this in, because I usually just ignore those kind of like, like he clearly doesn't hasn't put that much thought into it. Um, there's a business model where you can go rank a website like, plumbermytown.com and you own it, you build it, you rank it, and then you go rent it out. And when it's ranking, you're driving leads and you sell those leads to other people. So what skills are involved in 
that? Well, you need to know how to set up a WordPress website. You need to know how to rank a WordPress website. You need to know how to verify on Google My Business. You need to know how to optimize the Google My Business. You need to know how to do keyword research. You need to know how to generate leads. Then you need to know how to close sales. So I don't know, there's about eight things involved in that Hector, and it's probably a three year process, just like everything else is building a business online. In about three years, you could probably figure out all of those bits and pieces. Where do you start? You pick one and you go and you just start and you learn along the way. Um, that unfortunately is the process. It's a decent business model, but honestly, I don't like dealing with selling leads and this, that, the other. Uh, I prefer doing services because I could go land a client, I can go find a plumber who's not ranking. They're on page three. I can let them know I can help them get to page one. They can pay me $500 a month. I tell them it's going to be a eight to 12 month process. So I've got about a four to $6,000 contract over the course of a year. And then I just go do the work and I'm guaranteed payment. Um, as a service provider, that's what I prefer. If I'm going to build an affiliate business, then it's a little bit different in that sense. Um, Raven Sky asks, what's up, Raven? Good to, good to see you here. Uh, what are the proper tools for monthly subscription set up with PayPal, et cetera, and funnels? Uh, the website, his website's not really complete with content styling or just point to the correct video. So the, so many people overcomplicate this. And the reason why is that there's some gurus out there teaching you that you're one funnel away, that you need this and that and the other. To be perfectly honest, I know a lot of people who have made a lot of money. I'm talking millions of dollars to comma club people who use a page with a PayPal button. And you can go into any PayPal account and you can create a subscription button and you can go get the code for that and you can put it on any page on your website. You can even put the URL for that payment button inside of an email and you can sell subscriptions that way. It really is incredibly simple. Melanie and I started with a uh, WordPress plugin. It's a one-time payment plugin called the eStore. It's milesbeckler.com forward slash eStore, um, $50 plugin. I think we bought some add-ons to be able to run Stripe and something else. It was maybe $99 all in. I think we sold three, $400,000 of products with that one button. And what it did, what that, or what, with that one uh, plugin, what that plugin allowed us to do is accept credit cards in addition to PayPal. Before that, we'd made tens upon tens of thousands of dollars simply using PayPal buttons. So really simplify it down. The goal again is the same with the, the first one. I think her name was Tammy. Um, do you have an audience of people who know you, know of you, know what you do, who like you and trust you? That's the key, right? Because once you do, then it's just a formality of how do I go get that button to get them to pay me? There's a PayPal button inside of your PayPal account. It's free. If you need to be able to accept credit cards, which we finally hit a point where we had enough people kind of replying saying, I don't have a PayPal account. I'd like to buy this, but I want to use my credit card. It was like, okay, we, we need to add on that next level of tech, but we didn't start with adding on the funnels. I didn't have a funnel when we started. I couldn't accept credit cards when we started, but we started and we still made money. How did we start? Blog posts. We started by growing an audience. We started by marketing on social. We started by building the audience and then we built the email list. That was part two. Then we went, went, went for that. And then from there, we started sending out emails saying, hey, we got a special offer on this thing. Would you like it? If so, click here and it takes them to PayPal to check out. And sometimes we would sell it right in the email and the link in the email would simply be a directing them to the checkout page. Um, that's like a zero page funnel, right? Like literally it's like the email was the sales message and then it, it just, the, they land on the page that they make payment. If they make payment, I got notified and we would literally reply to their email to send them what they purchased. Um, that's minimum viable. That's what it takes really to prove the model. So many people get bogged down in trying to build all the fancy stuff first. You got to build the audience first, got to build the trust first. That's really, really the, uh, the big one there. I'm going to jump into the comments here for the live folks. I appreciate each and every one of you who have shown up here live with me today. It's great to have you here. And I'm going to find some questions in here. We got Brent, my man. It looks like this is the first question here. So he says, any thoughts on how I should be collecting leads? It's kind of a touchy subject, Miro Growth. So um, neurogrowth.ca is his website. So uh, I know you're doing in the mushrooms world. I know you're doing some content on like microdosing psilocybin. So paid ads are out the window, right? You're not, you're not going to run any sort of paid advertising with that topic matter. You're going to get shut down pretty quick. If there's one place you might be able to run paid ads, it's going to be on YouTube. But even then there, there's a good chance that eventually that will get shut down because I, I bet it's, I mean, it's got to be against their terms of service. I wouldn't, I don't even have to read that. So with that said, you create great blog content on your site that has a pop-up and the pop-up de delivers some sort of free thing that these people are interested in, right? And it could be the ultimate guide to the um, microdosing psilocybin, which you have a post on that, you said, and then you can make a PDF version. 
like, hey, don't have time to read this, get the PDF right here. There's a lot of successful SEOs. There's a lot of successful people who write 3,000, 5,000, 6,000 word posts that their call to action in the post is literally like, don't have time to read the whole thing, wanna just download it, enter your email, and I'll send you the PDF of this so you can read it when the timing's right for you um, to build the list there. But I think you wanna think one level above that. Someone who's into microdosing, why are they into microdosing, right? They're, no one's into microdosing because they think it's, well, maybe they think it's cool, but they, they think it's going to get them a result. What is that result that they're after? No one's into medicinal mushrooms um, for the sake of being, in, we think it's going to give us a result, right? Like um, Paul Stamets and, you know, I take the Stamets 7 host defense. Like, why do I take that? Because it boosts my immune system because it helps my body stay in absolute peak performance with all of the nutrients and all of the kind of beneficial blah, blah, blahs that I want because I think it's going to make me a healthier person is ultimately my reason for it. Um, so what is that reason that they actually want? And honestly, I think you're six or seven days in on your 90 day challenge. I went six months before I started my opt-in, right? I went all in on audience growth. The asset is your audience. Ultimately, you want to own that relationship at some point, which that's where the email list comes in. But just be sure you're you're really committed to the long-term benefits for your audience. At some point, relatively soon, you're going to run out of, of ways to talk about microdosing. Um, and that in and of itself is not something I would use to build a business on. That is an attention grabber. That is a um, that is a, a way to capture the attention of people. But ultimately, I think there needs to be a broader, more legal thing that you're offering within in this world. Um, something that you can ship through the mail, something that you can ultimately advertise and run paid advertising to, because that's what real businesses do, right? We, we are able to kind of obtain the attention of an audience and convert them on a regular basis with kind of consistent results, um, whether it's paid or organic or whatever it is, that, that's what a real business is. And if you have limitations because of your subject matter is um, illegal in, in many areas, and it might become illegal in certain areas, um, then that's something you need to think about. I know people who grew CBD businesses before CBD has had its real big boost, and they dealt with nothing but challenges from the merchant accounts, from everything. Like it's been challenge after challenge. Um, it paid off for them in this situation, but that's adding a level of risk on top of the already their risk of being an entrepreneur, right? So um, ultimately help people get what they want, right? That's that's the key. And on this one, it can just be a PDF for that document, but think bigger, think think broader than just microdosing because I don't think being a microdosing guy or the micro, like, so are you a brain hacker? Are you into nootropic? Cause that, that's like really a biohacking. Like that's really the, the next level of where it is. And this is just one little subset under that great way to meet people is through this kind of content, but you need to have somewhere higher, some, some bigger picture idea that you're, um, bringing them out to. So the comments are scrolling on super, super quickly and, um, cool. All kinds of people in here. Good to see everybody on Dwight. Good to have you on here, man. Um, Miles, do I have a recommendation for, where is that? That just moved. Chad B, do I have a recommendation for dealing with negative feedback or negative reviews, local SEO? So I do, and it's to get 10 times more positive reviews and 10 times more positive pieces of content out there. Uh, reputation management and review management are technically the, um, the, the phrases on that. Um, Chad, if you're in the CNC member, start a, start a thread with this question because I've got a new tool that I'm reviewing. Um, and it's a review management system that has some trainings teaching you how to get reviews. So it's impossible to remove negative content from the internet, right? Like, uh, every once in a while we might be able to remove a comment. Like I can block comments and I can remove comments from, from, uh, YouTube, but ultimately if somebody wants to go like, uh, slander me on their website, there's nothing I can really do about that. But what I've done over the course of the last five years before I ever made my first video is I've been building profiles and assets. Uh, what's a profile? It's a medium.com page that I've actually built out. Medium.com for slash Miles Beckler. My Twitter account that's like nine, 10 years old, right? Twitter.com for slash Miles Beckler. Um, my Instagram account, my Facebook account, all these accounts rank. So what I'm doing is I'm clogging up the first page of Google with my own content. So in that sense, I'm controlling what shows on the first page by going out and building as many high profile, um, high authority 
profile properties that I own that rank on the first page. And what this does is it effectively puts down anything anyone else is talking about me onto the second page, third page below. So that's, we push them down. That's basic review management. Uh, excuse me, that's basic reputation management. On the review side, you need to work with the business owner to put systems in place to actually get more reviews from people who are happy and to intercept reviews from people who are not happy. So you could have them send an email after the customer purchases and say, how'd we do? Give me feedback. If you didn't have a great experience, let me know I'm here to help. If you had a great experience, give me a quick sentence. Let me know what you loved about the experience. They'll reply. If the reply says this didn't work or this was broken, or I didn't like how this customer or this uh, employee said that you've now intercepted this you have the ability to fix that problem. And then the owner needs to commit to fixing the problem, right? Just asking and getting the problem is not fully it. Cause then you have the opportunity to solve the problem before they go burn them on the uh, socials, right? On Google reviews, on Yelp reviews, on TripAdvisor reviews. If they say, wow, you did a great job. I loved it, man. That the, the Reuben, vegan Reuben sandwich you all make over there is the best in the world. Thank you. Then you can reply back with a little link that says, that's amazing. If you've got a quick minute, we'd love it if you share that message with the world. Here's a link to our Google review page. Here's a link to our Yelp review page. Here's a link to our, whatever that one is and send them to one. Um, and just ask for the positive review from people who reply and say things are positive. And the system I'm talking about is a way to kind of automate that. And you can set it up for business owners and automate it. And it, it, it can cost you maybe 150 bucks set up and 50 bucks a month to run. You can sell these things for like 250 bucks a month. So there's a pretty good margin potential there. I'm researching this. I'll probably do a video on it once I, um, have some time to, to actually put that out. But, um, there, there is a system that I could show you that, that will do that from there. Um, Andrew Kirby, aside from my content, where can you learn how to rank on Google? Man, um, like by doing mostly, it's it's literally keyword research, great content, optimize the title, optimize the, like, I, you know, I just learn by doing, to be honest with you, thousands of blog posts over time, testing different things. The click-through rate on your title is super important. The click-through rate on your description is super important. The number of H tags, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, all those tags you need to have that's on parity with what's already ranking. So if you've got a phrase, uh, what is stoicism that you wanna rank for, um, go search it, go look at all the top 10 pages that rank currently. How many words are on each page? How many H1s, how many H2s, how many H3s? All of these data points, you find the average, and then you need your post to be within the average. I built a tool inside of the membership program that does that, essentially. It's a, a way to kind of pull all that data in one place. Um, but that's it. You go look at what's working, and then you go make a better variation of what's working with a more compelling title and a more compelling description to get more clicks. And that's the win. And really, ultimately, it comes from going through the motions and publishing over and over to really, really dial that in. Um, but there's no magic. Um, Justin Charnell says, 100 degrees South Dakota in the house. Man, we had rain the other day. Like, I think we're finally going to get back up in the mid-70s. I was paddleboarding the other day. I'm going to get to paddleboard again today, so I'm excited on that. Um, any affiliate marketer? Okay, not sure what that was. Air quality awareness consultant, Peter. All right, good on you, Peter. Um, Norway in the house, congruent thoughts. Pleasure to meet you. I've seen beautiful pictures of your landscape. I'd love to go hike in Norway at some point in time, uh, clearly in the middle of summer. Um, so let's see, how to promote CPA product with, what was that? Man, my comments are jumping around crazy. Let me try this approach here. And how to promote CPA products without ads. Uh, content, organic content, right? There's always the, it's always organic content is, is the answer to that. And, um, put out enough organic content and learn the basics of search engine optimization. People will find you when they find you, then you're able to kind of move them towards things they already want. You know, the, the world of affiliate marketing, whether it's CPA or whatever it is, you're helping people obtain that which they already desire. When you really get that, when you truly understand that, you've won. So many people are trying to force things on other people. Like, oh, I can I can sell this pen. Like, cool, let me, now I can be an affiliate for anything. I can sell um, hard drives, right? I can sell external hard drives, so cool. Let me just go push external hard drives out to everybody. And that's just the, the most difficult way to go about it, and it never works in that manner. But when you go build an audience of people who are photographers and they shoot, or videographers who shoot in 4K, and one of their biggest challenges is storing all of that footage, 
those people need and want to buy hard drives. And when you recommend the right hard drive to that person, it's a no brainer for them. When it's a cheaper, faster, better, longer life, it backs up everything for you. It's, it's a magical hard drive. You're not selling it, right? But the trick to that whole game is building the audience and the trust of people who are in that world. Okay, so that's that's it. Um, and I'm back to the original uh, list here. Steve Gilruth is next. He says that he's been working on a new social sharing platform for affiliates that's unique. It's aimed at Amazon and eBay affiliates. It has ClickBank too. People can submit posts, articles about Amazon and eBay products containing their affiliate links. Users can also share other posts earn commission when things sell. Full info at, and then he tried to plug it. Uh, you're a developer, not a content creator. Um, so your question is, how can you promote this to content creating affiliates? You post in a few Facebook groups, but as the site has no traffic of domain authority, they don't want to know. Um, if the concept just sucks, no worries. You'd appreciate any feedback. Um, current plan of action is create new posts daily for keywords such as cool gadgets for men, share the posts to build the sites, Pinterest and other social accounts. All right, Steve. So it sounds to me like your product is content creators and your product is affiliate marketers. So who has the attention of these people already? And how do you go build relationships with those people? Okay. Who are the influencers in the world of helping the affiliate marketers? So the guys over at Authority Hacker are really big in the Amazon affiliate space. I have no idea who's big in the eBay affiliate world, but there's somebody out there, right? So how do you go build relationships with those people? You build relationships with those people, right? You take them out to lunch, you fly across the country and sit down with them. There's, it's an insane amount of work. They're, the idea that um, if you build it, they will come, that comes from the Field of Dreams, a great baseball movie, does not apply on the internet, right? Like if we build it and market the snot out of it and make sure it works and really prove to people that it works and build trust with those individuals, we might have a chance of getting user growth. Um, so if it works, okay, so you've got a social sharing platform for affiliates that's unique. Um, I don't exactly know who's your audience is and what problem you've solved. So I want to go back to the process. Okay, so you've built something you think you might be able to monetize with. That's phase three. Phase one is audience. Who is your audience and how can you help them? And what content have you put out for these people for months and months and months, right? Are you one, are you an affiliate who uses this tool and it's helped you triple your income as an affiliate? If so, cool. You are so far your audience, but how do you help affiliate marketers make more money, right? You need to build an audience of affiliate marketers if this is what you want. Then trust. How do you gain the trust of these people? Generally, they're going to opt in for something. It could be free access, beta access to your report, but it could be a free report. It could be you teaching them how you've made $150,000 a year for three years straight doing affiliate marketing. And maybe this tool is the, the special sauce of that in the report and that promotes it. But really you're just looking at the monetization. You're like, I got this thing I built, how can I monetize it? And it's like, but that's not, where we start. We start with who can I help and how can I help them? Then how do I create the content to get their attention? Then how do I build trust with them by getting them on the email list and then sending them helpful emails? So start at the beginning, right? Go back to the audience, figure out who your audience is, what problems they have, create great helpful content. Um, and theoretically, if you create a software to solve your own problem, you have a good story, right? So if you went from not making money as an affiliate, now you're making $35,000 per month, that's a really good story. People are gonna wanna know about that, right? That's the kind of growth that other people want to see. If you haven't done that, if you just made something you think's interesting, but you haven't made literally like hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars with this tool yet, that's where you're at is, is you need to get that going. You need to prove this works for yourself, then help one or two other people with it. And then you can kind of grow out from there. It always starts by helping ourselves, then helping one other person, then helping small groups of people. And then we're ready to scale things because every time we help that next level of people. So we help ourselves and we learn how to do something. We learn how to create a result ourselves. Then you help somebody else do it. And we learn that thing differently. When we teach, we learn at a deeper level than when we do. So me teaching you everything I know about Facebook ads has helped me understand Facebook ads massively better than when I just did my Facebook ads. I was very unconscious about everything I did when I ran my ads. But when I had to present it to you in a way you could follow the steps, I had to think about it differently. Why am I doing it that way? Why wouldn't I do it? And it got, I learned it better by teaching it. 
Then when I scaled it up to small groups, it's like, okay. So I helped another, I've helped a few friends one off before I ever made a YouTube video run their Facebook ads and they all got it and it clicked. It's like, okay, now can I put this out in a way, in a broadcast medium, not a back and forth sitting down with somebody, but in a broadcast medium where dozens or hundreds of people can get the results. Um, sure enough, I've had one, even one guy went from making 10 grand a month to $100,000 per month by simply following what I taught on my Facebook ads. Um, he had never commented. I didn't meet him until he showed up to an event I was speaking at and he came up and shake my hand, shook my hands and said, Miles, you, you've turned me into a millionaire. Like your Facebook video ad, your Facebook videos have turned me into a millionaire. Now, he had an audience of people who knew him, liked him and trusted him. He had a really unique product that solved a big urgent product problem for them. So he had a lot of the bits and pieces needed and I just helped him scale through my content there. So it's really just kind of understanding that the order of things is super important Steve, and you have to have an audience of people who know, like, and trust you. If you don't have that, you don't have anybody to sell things to. Okay. It's not about creating a thing that the world's going to love. It's about creating an audience and helping them get what they already want. Affiliate marketers want to make more money. They're affiliate marketers. That's what they do. They think about every offer. Everything they do is through the lens of, can I make more money with this? Okay. When your tool helps them do that, Perfect, but you need to be that first. Then you need to help other people with it, build test testimonials, case studies, et cetera, from there. Um, Shane Phillips is saying, my website will be turning one year old in November soon after another year and job loss to get this website running. Since then, I have received lots of clicks, but no convert conver conversations, I think he means conversions, into sales. The problem is copywriting, clearly. What do I see on your website that needs to be changed? You're not getting any calls. You've asked your spirit guides in the universe to get this business going. Um, it's about taking, it's about like how many books, how many, how many copywriting books have you read in the last year? I mean, you're not even a year in, it's gonna be a year old in November. So you're just starting. It's, it's at least a one to three year plan, okay? So you're barely 25% of the way down the path. How many copywriting books have you read? How many of the great sales letters in the past have you handwritten out like all the copywriting books instruct you to do? How many copywriting courses have you bought and gone through? How many different variations of copy have you tested on your website? I guarantee you the answer to that is none, 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 I'm not. No one takes copywriting seriously enough. And everyone who's like, oh, I've got this thing and it doesn't sell, your copy sucks. It's always back to your copy sucks. I've read dozens I've, I've i've spent i've spent tens if I've, probably fifty thousand dollars plus in buying copywriting learning copywriting hiring copywriters hiring copywriting consulting hiring coaching for copywriting going through ad writing classes i've spent just amazing amounts of time handwriting out sales pages i've handwritten out every, other people's blog posts other people's entire funnels i've handwritten out video sales letters that absolutely crush it just word for word i'm not gonna go run it through a transcription and then read it like that's not programming my brain to work as the greatest copywriters in the world work. But when I hand write out what they did, it starts to get me in the flow of what they were doing and writing and creating. Then on top of that, my wife and I have run about 200 products or so. So we've written about 200 plus sales letters. I've run, I mean, thousands of split tests from the ads to the landing pages, to the headlines, to the sales pages. I mean, thousands of split tests. And sure enough, out of all that work, I've got a few things that crush it, right? That absolutely crush it. I got a few products that have brought in several hundreds of thousands of dollars and everything together has brought in multiple millions of dollars. Um, but we've, I've done the work, right? Like, and that usually is like, so if you're asking for spirit for guidance, like I'm, I'm obviously the guidance to say, do the work around copywriting, like go read the copywriting books, do the in work. Like there's no law of attraction. That's why I've made all these law of attraction videos recently. It's not about praying for it. It's not about asking for it. It's not about visualizing for it. It's about putting in the hard work and the time. And with that commitment and focus of I'm going to be the best damn copywriter in the world. I'm going to be the best damn seller of my thing there is on the internet. Then it's time to do the work and it's a long process. But the, 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 the act of getting another human being to pull out their credit card on a web page and type in the credit card and buy something is one of the most difficult tasks in the world. It is so incredibly difficult. And people try to make it sound easy. Um, a lot of people in this space are habitual buyers. So we think that normies are, you know, people who don't buy like aren't addicted to buying marketing products. Um, we think that they're also addicted to buying things online. Most people still don't shop online, right? There's still like 15, 20% of Americans don't even have bank accounts. What? 
like 18% or something like that. Literally don't even have bank accounts. What? Like the world is not where we think it is. We are a weird subsection of the world. And remembering that most people take a lot of handholding, convincing, trust, belief before they're going to be willing to pull out that credit card and purchase is, is really the key. So, so that's it. I think um, it's not necessarily about more content on your blog. It's sure there's more trust required, but ultimately it's the offer does not match the, the audience, right? It's audience market match. And when that's dialed in and communicated correctly through the pre-frame of having trust, everything seems to work from there. Um, let me go back into the, the comments here and see what's cracking on the comments. Um, comments are jumping around a bunch. Um, let me reopen this. So give me a quick second. I, I want to reopen the actual page that it's on. So while I'm opening the, the page, I got another question here. So I have a website and I'm posting content around once a week. My last two posts were 9,000 words and 4,500 words. That is crazy long. Uh, I work full-time job, young son and a daughter on the way. Congratulations. Your website's coming up on seven months old on the make money online niche. Cool. So you're, you're barely an infant yourself online. You've received nearly zero traffic. Of course, the make money online niche is the most one of the most competitive niches and it's tiny. Uh, if you go look at Google trends, make money online versus like um, natural, like man, look at anything in the naturopathy world or weight loss, like go look on and Google trends. I highly recommend, let's actually do that together, shall we? So make money online niche. I wanna prove to everybody here. So I'm gonna share my screen. So we're gonna share this. Let me go over here real quick. You guys should be able to see my screen. So people think that, so people get infatuated with the, the world of making money, okay? And they're like, oh, I've heard that I need, to, I need to build a business around what I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about making money online. Therefore, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna build a business on make money online. So google.com slash trends. The problem is you're going up against really, really strong competition like myself, like Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins is in the space, right? Tony Robbins just sold a make money online course. What the is our world coming to? Dean Graziosi, like you are up against the best salespeople, the Frank Kearns, the Ryan Dices of the world. You are up against the best people who have been making millions online for decades and you're doing it for seven months. So of course you're not winning, but I wanna show data on this. So make money online. And everybody thinks like, oh, well, the weight loss and fitness space is, is, you know, super saturated. And it's like, no, it's, it's the biggest space in the world. Like most Americans have a weight problem. Like the, like the average American is obese, like not even overweight. They're like obese. It is, it is a, a, a critical issue for many people. So, um, weight loss, I'm going to start there and just see what these two lines do. Yeah. Do you see that? Anybody notice something like maybe a little difference between the search volumes between weight loss and uh, like make money online? Like when it's in this perspective, it's like, oh yeah, of course nobody searches that. Now let's do internet marketing because that's the other thing. Sorry, can't talk and type internet market. No, I didn't spell it right. One second, marketing. Can't talk and speak at the same time. I can't talk and type. So now you can even see like, so people are like, oh, so I'll teach internet marketing and I'll be an internet marketing guru or, oh, I'll be a make money online guru. And I'm like, damn, the weight loss space is huge, y'all. Like there's so much room for so many more people in the weight loss space. And this just, this is using data. Like I wanna go look at the, the com. Oh, I don't have the comments up. I'm gonna pull the comments in a second. Answer me in the comments. Like, does this make sense? Like, is this clear enough that like going into the make money space, online space, if you don't have 20 years of experience and you're not an absolute badass, is kind of setting yourself up for failure. That's what I wanna prove with this here. Um, and so digital marketing is searched a lot more than internet marketing. Um, it is more of a corporate phrase. So we're bringing in a lot of the corporate world, but even that does not even register. Um, let's do golf, right? And this is where I wanna show you guys where the passion stuff lies. So golf is huge compared to weight loss, huge. And I've been like, man, the golf space is wide open. Okay, I'm gonna pull off um, internet marketing because it is absolutely ridiculous. Remove this. I'm gonna add fishing, right? I think there's a lot of fishing folks out there. So let's do fishing. 
and my man Dwight's on the line. So I just want to prove to him, bingo. Okay. Not as big as golf, huge, bigger than weight loss, way bigger than make money online, way bigger than, and what's cool about fishermen and golfers is they'll buy everything. They will buy every damn contraption, every new thing, the sparkle, shiny twirler, wurzer gig that'll catch one extra bass, to catch the bigger, so they can brag to their friends, right? That's all they want to do in these spaces. So this is why I recommend so often people like go into something that's interesting to you. So what I'm, so I'm, I'm thinking about my next, next, uh, affiliate marketing site. I'm going to now remove digital marketing because it's not even on the map. Um, cause I can only have five. So I have to keep removing something. So virtual reality is something that I'm thinking about building a site on. Um, and I haven't actually looked at this re R E A L I T Y. The, the technology behind virtual reality has really taken off. Um, man, it's flatlined. It ain't nothing. So, so like literally it's still not there yet. So I'm, I'm probably going to be a pioneer in this, but if I've got three, five years of experience, when the search for, um, virtual reality is up around where the green is, then I'll, I'll be kind of positioned to be kind of an old head in the space, even though I'm a little late to the game right now. So I want to make sure that makes sense. I'm going to stop sharing this here. Let's go back to the screencast. I'm going to jump over. I need to open up, um, my comments. So one second here. I accidentally closed the comments. They were they were glitching. They were jumping around a bunch. Is that clear? Like going into the make money online space, going into the internet marketing space is the worst idea. And here's the thing. There's so many courses and there's so many gurus out there. And even these memberships, like the WA one, like all they tell you to do is like, okay, great. You pay us 30 cents. Now go tell teach other people how to make money online and sell our course. Why do they want you to sell that? It's because they make money, right? Like you are now paying them to go sell their thing. Like what the, like that makes no sense, but that's how it all works. Click funnels. They'll feed you the Kool-Aid. Now go sell click funnels. I was at a click funnels event in the, in the airport after this dude was wearing the, the shirt we got. And I was like, yo, funnel hacker, what's up, man? What are you building? What, what's your business? What's your niche? Oh, I, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to sell click funnels. I just think it's cool. It's like, if I sell enough of it, I'll get a free car. Like, wait, wait, wait. you're not. You're not running a business on it. You're not using it for anything. You're just trying to get, you're trying to convince other people to buy something and use something that you're not even using for yourself. Like you haven't produced a result. You're not gonna produce a result. You're just hoping to scam some people into buying this piece of shit. Like that's your business model. And who's the winner in that situation? Russell. This dude's paying $97 a month for something he's not even using. And now he's trying to go convince other people. And like, if he can't create a result with it, how the hell are they going to create a result with it to buy it? So he convinced it's like network. It's the worst parts of network marketing. That's the whole space. They bring you in with hopes and dreams of two comma, make your one funnel away. And then they get you to go sell their shit. They make all the money. You make nothing. You're out of pocket. Everybody you bring into it goes out of pocket. One in a thousand do well with it. I get it. Like, but one in a thousand will do well with WordPress. One in a thousand will do well on fucking Weebly right? Do well on anything. One in a thousand. Ben Settle still codes his landing pages in HTML. Hand codes it in HTML. Ugly as hell. Makes millions of dollars doing it that way, right? So it really is. That's what they're selling you. It's easy. People who want to make money, spend money to make money, right? Oh, you could sell to them. And they're just convincing. They're feeding you Kool-Aid to convince you to sell their product so they can make the money. Who's making all the money in ClickFunnels? Seriously. It's the dude running at the top. It's the dude at the top of the fucking pyramid is who's making all the money. Like, let's be real about it. So whether you're just teaching for another course, whether you're trying to create your own course, but how are you going to create a course if you haven't made a bunch of money online, right? Like the, the, that's why I teach everything for free. Like I, I'm not going to sell something in this space. Like it's disgusting. It's like a cesspool of narcissists is what this space is. So I'm just going to give everything away for free so I can be real in this moment and call everybody out on their bullshit because everybody is feeding you lines of shit trying to sell you stuff and then trying to get you to sell their stuff. So like I just needed to be willing to step up and do that. And I've got the skills because I've been making money online since 2008 three, I've been doing digital marketing since the late nineties, 20 years, roughly, right. Of doing this, that I've got enough skill and I saw enough Lambo boy and fake gurus selling courses. I was like, I got to put an end to this, by putting it all out for free. So, um, that's kind of like the honest, uh, dressing was like, Oh shit, miles uncut and raw in this video. Um, so Jeremy Ferguson says, I use ClickFunnels for a landing page and that's it, but you don't sell it like the people who want money give him rubbish value. Yeah, and I mean, that's what I'm saying is like ClickFunnels works, but you could also use Thrive Themes and you could do it for 30 bucks a month max, right? Um, and you'd get the same result. You could hand code it if you know basically, like there's just a million ways to get there. Uh, the tool is not the, 
the tool is not the thing. It's the, the understanding of how to use that tool. And when you have the understanding of copywriting, of building an audience, of building a relationship, of growing a list, at that point, the tools become irrelevant. You could hire somebody to code it in HTML. You could use Thrive Themes. You could optimize press. You could use lead pages. You, it does, it's literally, they're all interchangeable at that point, but yet they're all being sold as the only solution that's going to do it. And that, that's the problem because then they want to get you to sell it because they got a 40% commission fee and that's what you end up eating if you're a user so our buddy who's using it um jeremy ferguson 97 bucks a month 40 percent of that's going right into somebody else's pocket for the affiliate program that's it so like four so you're you're literally taking 40 percent, so 45 dollars a month you're just handing to another person for the right to use a software like why not just build that out somewhere cut the middlemen out of it save a bunch of money and do it the other way and like some people are like, well click on easy cool Cool. If you're cool with handing $40 a month to some random stranger who's an affiliate who you clicked on a link at one point. And then the funny thing is if you didn't click through an affiliate, then all of that extra money that was built in the affiliate program is just extra margins for, you know, team Russell, uh, essentially. And you're just, you're just paying him an overinflated rate clearly. Uh, so either way it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and I could have, I could easily be in the two comma club. I mean, I'm, I'm already in my own damn two comma club, I've made millions on this online thing. I don't use their system to, to brag about that. Um, but like I could have them buying me a car and I could sell a lot of click funnels if I was willing to, uh, take my ethics and be like, uh, yeah, I'm willing to sell stuff. That's okay. That's overpriced because I'm gonna get me some, right? Like there's, and there are people out in this world who that's how they look at the world. So how can I get from this world? But I'm here, like, how can I give to this world? And that's really my, my focus, uh, Jeremy Ferguson. So look at my, um, look at my DIY sales funnel video series. I show you how to build it in thrive themes on WordPress. Um, even lead pages is 29 bucks a month or something for like, if you're just doing lead pages, uh, somebody said Divi, I used to use Divi. That's an elegant theme. Um, I found it a little clunky, but I mean, again, I think it's 70 bucks a month. I still pay for my elegant themes, uh, subscription. Um, it's like maybe 70 bucks a year. And then hosting today, like what, 50 bucks a year, 100 bucks a year for hosting. So like $170 a year, and you're paying 97 bucks a month, like that's like 10 months free type thing. It takes a little bit of effort to build it out that way. You gotta learn a new system. And for some people, that's not, they're not ready for that. And like, I get that. Um, all right, I'm gonna go up and see if I can catch some more questions for you guys. Um, damn, rag the nuts off. Holy shit, mate. You just dropped me like 100 pounds. Uh, Matt just throwing 100 pounds down like he's a fucking boss up in this place. So can I create an episode on my top five or more books to read and listen to? You just draw, bought the law of attraction and two more from my suggested list uh, ep two episodes ago. For sure, mate, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored, I'm, I'm blessed. Like we should get on, the, on a call, a group call, you and uh, the Mank, the Mank entrepreneur, Dave, right? It's Dave, yeah. Like we should get on a, a group call. We haven't chatted for a long time. Um, one thing I'm going through right now over and over that I'm loving is uh, Bob Proctor's You Were Born Rich seminar. Now it's from the 70s, so it's like really 70s out. He put it for free on YouTube. Uh, it's the Gallagher Proctor Institute. Now, he has a new product out. That's oh, It's a $2,000 product. I got access from a friend. $2,000 product that's literally like 10 videos. Um, essentially, he just goes over Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. That book lit him up and he's been learning more about it. And, and really, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich looks at the law of attraction. To me, it's one of the first mainstream books about the law of attraction that were out there. Um, but Bob Proctor's take on it, on the application of that is really good. So anyways, he's got this free You Were Born Rich seminar. You can get it on Audible for 50 15 bucks if you want, but you could just go download the MP3s from the YouTube videos and throw it on your phone. I use an app called um, Smart Audiobook Player. It's a little red icon. It's a, I'm on Android. I don't know if it's an iPhone thing. And what it does is it allows me to put in a folder of MP3 files, and then it'll go through it. It'll remember where I'm at. So it turns like a folder filled with all of the MP3 files from the Bob Proctor videos um, into a uh, ordered follow. I can pause it. I can stop. I can go do something. I can pick it up the next day and it'll remember where I was just like audible will. So back to the big picture here, Bob Proctor is now selling a $2,000 course on how to manifest. It's like the living legends things. It's the same content It's really high production value, really high production value. There's not one new idea in that, that he's not giving away for free and he's charging 2000 bucks. 
I'm kind of astonished. I'm a little bit, I'm un poco triste. I'm a little sad about that because it's like, I feel like he's just taking advantage of people at this point. I feel like there's this huge trend to sell $2,000 products in our world. And it's literally the same ideas from his, you were born rich seminar. Brent, I know I linked that to you too, man. It's so I like to think of that as an absolute $2,000 seminar sitting on YouTube for free. You got to deal with a little bit. It's, it's 70s out. You don't have to watch it. They talk about the book. If you just Google workbook from uh, you were born rich seminar, you'll find the workbook. I glanced at the workbook like twice, maybe three times, because there's like a picture they draw to understand what that was. Um, but other than that, I just listened to it and I'm, I'm re listening to it now. Uh, when I'm out working on the yard, mowing the lawn, I just cut and pulling weeds. I literally just, just nonstop filling my head with it. Um, so that's a really good one. Another one is, I think is, um, and this is a free book also that you can find, uh, cause it's so old Wallace Waddles think and grow. Uh, no Wallace Waddles, the science of getting rich science of being rich, the science of something rich. Okay. Science of getting rich Wallace Waddles. So it is a, um, it's a free book now because it's outside of the copyright copyright ended in like 1923. So everything before 1923 is in the public domain. So you can find PDFs of it if you want to read it, but I bet there's people on YouTube who have, um, just narrated it and done the narration on YouTube as well. And so you can kind of download the audio from that and listen to it as well. This is why I love that audio book. Uh, smart audiobook player app. Um, cause like to me, a phone needs to be a storage device. And that's what iPhones make it so difficult to move things on. Um, but I think you can move things on through iPhone, through iTunes. You set it up as a podcast. There's a way in iTunes to flip it over to a podcast. And what that does is it'll allow you to leave and come back. It'll put the audiobook in your podcast folder. Um, if they don't make that app for it. So you can kind of leave and come back and man. So every morning when I make coffee in the morning, headphones go in, I got 15 to 20 minutes of right now it's you were born rich again i'm thinking about it again i'm just i'm just re-listening to it again to just keep my head filled with these ideas um prosperity consciousness by frederick Lehrman is another one that is on audible um it is a nightingale conant course i thought that was brilliant and yes i will make that video for you i'll i'll do a separate video of these um like my top i'll probably do like a top law of attraction books because i've got a lot of the top copywriting books i've already done that top books for entrepreneurs but what I'm realizing and what I'm really, really realizing now is I've taught all the tactics. It's all out there. And yet people aren't rolling up their sleeves and doing the work. They're still following the scams. They're still drinking the Kool-Aid of those make money by selling, make money scams. Right. And it's like, why I'm showing how to do it. I've clearly created the result. Like why are so few people taking the right action? Some are most aren't 90 plus percent. Why? It's the conversations that people are having in their head. That's it, man. It literally, it's all mindset. And I'm just realizing now um, that like, it's clearly not a tactics problem to help most people watching you get from where you are to where you want to be. I don't care if you're at 10 grand a month trying to get to hundred thousand dollars a month, or if you're at a hundred dollars a month in income and you're trying to get to 10 grand a month, it's really a mindset shift. That's going to get you there. And when the mindset shifts, the tactics become relatively easy. They become simple, right? Not easy, but simple. Um, the process of making helpful content and putting out videos, all that it's simple, it ain't easy. There are days I don't want to do videos. I'll be honest, these live videos are a little bit of a cop out for me. I was like, man, I don't want to set up the camera and the lights and do it. And then I edit and I render. I was like, eh, I'll just go live, right? Because it's easy. But I think in this live moment, I think we actually get cool stuff popping out. I think my little rants, my soapbox, I got a soapbox down here. I'm standing on y'all didn't notice. But like, I feel like these interesting, cool things happen in this back and forth moment. So even though it's kind of a cop out, because I really didn't feel like making a video today, I just did something else. It's, but yet the, the philosophy, the mindset conversation is I got a deadline. I have not missed three videos a week ever since I've committed to it ever, not once the flu. I flew across the ocean twice. I've done over 45 hours of travel. I've had to make it from the freaking lounge in the airport. I've had to make videos in airports. I've made videos in cars driving. Literally. I do not miss my deadlines for you because you are all that matter. Okay. And when you get to the point where your audience is all that matters, not how Papa going to get mine, right? Where my bacon at Nah. when it flips to how am I going to help you actually build a real in business finally. So you can stop watching these stupid videos from these fake gurus flashing their Lambos, right? Like, Hey, here's my Lambo derpa derpa, sell my thing and you make hella money, right? Like, I don't know how to make you, how to get you to shift. 
Uh, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's mindset. It's, I'm pretty sure it's, it's helping you rewire this. And specifically, it's the subconscious mind. Uh, the conscious mind is, is uh, I, I, and we'll get there. That, that's coming in future videos. I really think it's the scripts running in the subconscious mind, which was all programmed when you were like one, two, three, four, five years old, right? It was all programmed before you were six years old. Um, and we can't blame those people who programmed us this way. They were doing the best they could. Uh, but we all have a lot of this, these limiting beliefs running through our thing that just stop us. And we just keep stopping. And we just keep stopping. And, and that's the problem. Um, but it's 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 showing up every day. It's showing up in every week. Like I don't care hell or high water. I got to make these videos happen. That's a mindset thing, right? It's not a tactic. There's no magic tactic going on on this channel. It's the fact that I'm showing up every single week, multiple times a week, to give value to you, hell or high water. If I'm sick, I ain't tripping. I'm gonna show up for you, right? If I'm traveling, I ain't tripping. I'm gonna show up for you, right? It's that mindset, that definite definitiveness of purpose, of guaranteeing that you have what you need to figure this game out. So I did all the tactics. So I figured the game out. Okay, well, it's got to be something else. And it's it is. It's up there. Um, kind of kind of random on that. Went on a, a bit of it. Uh, I really appreciate that, Matt. That's kind of cool to see. Um, hundred pounds. That's like one hundred and fifteen dollars. Got lowered. Um, and let's let's do a group call just to catch up on things. It's been too long, my man. Uh, so. Pulpo Galactico? Is that the galactic octopus? Okay, you have the coolest name on YouTube I've ever heard. What's the best way to approach a blog about a topic that you're not an expert on? Go study it, go to the library, read all the books, learn, get become an expert, right? Most people don't read one book on a topic. Most people here, like we'll go back to that copywriting thing because I'm like, have you re read the copyright books? No, most people who try to sell stuff online have never read a copywriting book. So when you go read one copywriting book, you are literally ahead of like 80% of the crowd. You go read five copywriting books, you are in the top 5% of people studying and practicing copywriting, period. So, and that's the same truth with everything. So go read the books. That's what we as affiliate marketers do is we spend our time to find solutions and answers to research, to test, to find solutions and answers that we could share for our audience, right? So I'm building a whole nother affiliate marketing website now, like, it is not a valuable use of my time. It might make three, five grand a month, okay? Uh, where my business is at now doing 20 plus that number, it is not gonna move the needle in my business and it's a waste of my time. But it ain't about me, it's about you. So I'm doing it anyways to document the process to start again from zero in a niche that I'm not an expert in because I'm not in this at all. I'm just a random dude. And it's taken a lot of time to research things because I'm not an expert in this stuff. So I'm becoming one through creating all of this content on this new topic, which requires a lot of research and reading through everything from technical documents to other reviews um, to, to get that knowledge. So it's it's time, energy, it's, it's really figuring it out. Um, Trishan Ryan, do I consider myself an SEO? Yeah, I'm, I'm a badass SEO. That's why my video, Learn SEO, is sitting on top of YouTube. Like if you go search Learn SEO, I'm number one, baby. And that happens for a reason because I'm one of the best in the, in the world right there. And I'm, I'm comfortable saying that because I got the chops and I can back it up and I'm ranking. Uh, but I don't do SEO professionally, right? I'm not for hire. I'm not a service provider. But search engine optimization is why my wife's site has 30 million visits to it. Search engine optimization is why I have a multi-million dollar business, period, is because of SEO. And I've been, I've been on this game since like 2009, 2008, 2007 um, is when I really have been practicing. So I've survived all of the, the algorithm updates and, and all of it, stuff that wiped out other SEOs, wiped out entire SEO agencies. Like I'm still here, I'm still kicking, I'm still sitting number one on YouTube. So, um, Jesse and Ryan, why you never take your hat off? I don't take my bracelets off, I don't take my shirt off because it's a part of the package, my man. That's just how it works. Um, Justin Cooper, you have the opposite problem. You're booking calls from Facebook ads at 30 bucks a call. You've done 20 calls in Royal high ticket problem and no sales. Learn to sell my man. That's it. You got, you thought the issue was your sales call. So you got that down. What do you have? Uh, what tips do you have for client enrollment? Like clearly you are not either offering them what they want or you're not communicating it correctly. That's it. So you can run them through different preframes. You can run them through a different series of educational materials to get them ready to buy before they talk to you. You're probably not talking to the right people. Also, you probably don't have enough filtering systems going on. You could probably have filtered half or more of those calls out. You're probably all focused on how many calls can I get when the focus needs to actually be how many clients can I get? And if you end up talking to three people next week and of those three people two of them buy you're going to do a lot better than talking to 30 people so what systems can you put in place to filter out the tire kickers more effectively but somewhere there's a, a mismatch right what they want what they believe is different than what you're offering and i don't think they can get you there 
It might be that they don't trust you. It might be that they don't believe you. It might be that they don't believe they can do it. They think you can, but I can't, right? There's something there that you have not addressed yet. And you can address it in the content that happens before that phone call, or you can address it different with a different sales messaging. Um, how many sales books you read, right? Have you gone through Grant Cardone's selling books? Have you gone through Zig Ziglar selling books? Have you gone through Tom Hopkins selling books? Three people, at least 10 books on it. If this is your business and you're not spending every single waking moment learning to be the absolute best salesperson, have you gotten a job selling door to door? Go get a job, find a job selling something door to door. You wanna learn how to sell, go find a, a job that'll get you selling door to door and go, go eat what you hunt for six months. I guarantee you, you will learn how to sell something, especially if they got a great sales training program. Tim Conley, who I've had on this channel before, um, he went through an insurance, he, he got a job with an insurance company because they had a great sales training program. And he went through the sales training program and he quit like day two because he just wanted the sales training program. And that's how he hacked his way to getting sales skills that he then learned how to translate to copywriting. Um, gotta learn to sell, that's it. Like, that's, that's big time. Um, Linus Halling is in Virginia. What's up, man? 91 degrees there. Do I suggest doing a 120 day challenge on YouTube, learning website creation, starting with, or learning copywriting at the same time? So Linus, what is easier for you, writing or making videos? That's the big question. Do what's easiest. Um, copywriting is a lifelong skill. So it's something you should be reading, you should be learning about, and everything you learn about copywriting will help you with your titles, with your descriptions, with all the other aspects of um, what you're doing, uh, whether it's writing blog posts or whether it's uh, making videos, but do what's easier for you to do. And yeah, for sure, do, do 120 week challenge, three posts a week for 120 weeks, do 120 day challenge, post a day for 120 days, whatever you can do, crank out as much great content in whatever medium is easiest for you. Videos are easy for me. This moment with you right here and now is super easy for me. That's why I make videos. That's why I've got teammates and systems to turn it into written content. Um, cause that's not easy for me. That takes a lot of time and energy for me. And it's very draining. This charges me when I'm done. I'm like, I'll go upstairs. I'm just like this ball of energy. And Melanie's like, damn, all right. You're like fucking bouncing around the room uh, because I really do get charged up by this. And that's how I know I'm in the right place. That's how I know I'm doing the right thing is because of how much fun this is, is for me. Um, so Ray says, what are the three or so top copywriting books I, remind, I recommend as a beginner copywriter? So um, definitely... Eugene Schwartz, he's got the um, Breakthrough Advertising. It's about a $300 book, but it's 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 better than any $1,000 or $2,000 course I've ever been through. Um, that's a great one. So John Capel's Tested Advertising Methods, John Capel's Making Ads Pay, Victor Schwab, How to Write a Good Advertisement, A Short Course in Copywriting, um, The Boron Letters from... Um, Ah, his name just escaped me. It's on my website. It's all free. That one's free. You can search for boron letters, comma milesbeckler.com. In Google, it'll take you to the post. Uh, Gary Halbert, geez. Um, that's that's where I would start. If you can't afford the Eugene Schwartz book, you can get all of the other ones for 25 bucks, 20, 15 bucks if, if you buy the used copies uh, and deal with somebody else's notes in them. Um, that's where I would start. It's really good stuff. Oh, um, and Yasir is saying he's listening to the Robert Collier book. I've been through that as well. Um, Robert Collier is an old school copywriting book. Um, that's it. So Bob Randallclaw, what's the first copywriting step to take? Read the books and then start writing. Because one thing that all copywriters do is they write. You see, we have this weird thing in our world. People want to be a, an author, right? I want to be a published author, but nobody wants to go through the problem of writing a book because writing a book is like pulling fucking teeth. It is horrible. You got to write, you got to edit, you got to like come up with an idea. It's the process of creating a novel and, and actually getting it to where it's ready to get published with yourself. That is, that is a brutally painful birthing experience. Being a published author with a best selling book sounds fun. Nobody is willing to go through the actual work, but yet 80% of Americans think they've got a book inside of them. And 80% of Americans think they, they have what it takes to be a best selling author. Ain't none of them willing to do the work. So how do you become good at copywriting? You write. You can write sales letters for everything around you. You can write a sales letter for duct tape, right? You literally come up with a great headline about duct tape. Magic solution able to secure everything, you know, like literally holds together airplanes while extreme landings. Like you can write, 
sales letters for everything in your reality. My little magnet bracelet, right? Copper and magnets. Why do I wear this? Sales copy. So you just practice by like literally forcing yourself to write sales copy, whether you have products or whether you're just making stuff up and you're just writing sales copy for random things you have around the house. Um, you write a great sales letter a day, every day for 60 days. You, well, the first ones won't be great. They'll get better and better and better, especially if you're reading the books at the same time. So Nick is not making any money online at all and says, what to exactly do with my time? I'm spending time on creating content, trying to get two or three blog posts out each week, but I also need to focus on marketing. That is marketing, by the way. Uh, social engagement, you don't. Courses, really, YouTube, audio, et cetera. So you don't need to focus on all of that. This is the mindset thing we're talking about. You only need to get great at one thing. Everyone who's extremely successful in our world went all in on one thing and they got great and they got known for one thing. They maybe reinvested and built teammates and systems around them to now be everywhere. Gary Vaynerchuk, right? So a lot of people look at Gary V and they're like, man, Gary's like, I got to be everywhere. Gary's everywhere. I got a videotape. I got to document everything. Like I got to be like Gary V. Go look at what Gary V did to become Gary V. Wine Library TV. Dude sat down in front of a camera for a thousand videos talking about wine and it took him over 80 videos before he got comfortable and started to be himself 80 videos go watch his old wine library tv videos the first ones hi i'm gary vaynerchuk and today i'm gonna drink wine. like he was he look at my first videos everyone starts there right but really truly so gary vaynerchuk went all in on youtube and twitter okay but like really truly if you look at what's got him to where he's at it wasn't the twitter it was the youtube Okay, so he could have left Twitter alone. He used Twitter as a way to seed ideas for wine. He could have left that alone completely and still be where he's at because of his YouTube prowess. Now today, what he's doing is needs to be looked at through the lens of, okay, that dude created a multi-million dollar business and then turned guru and then hired 17 people to the tune of $50,000 a month to follow him around and make his life look magical on social. You need to do the first part, okay? We're watching him do this phase two, but you need to do phase one, which is awkwardly do one thing over and over a thousand times. I don't care if it's blogging. I don't care if it's YouTubing. I don't care if it's podcasting. Social does not count. That's it. So that's where you need to be. That's it. So 80, 100% of your focus goes there. You will create results over time. Um, Scott Finello making, uh, under hundred bucks a month. He says, can I interview more students and share their case studies? Um, motivation is his biggest challenge. You know what to do, but staying fired up to crank out the articles for years is rough. I, I can. And he says, uh, hearing about past students who succeed, uh, is very motivating. I can. And, um, I want to start interviewing some friends of mine as well who are doing really well, who aren't known and who have niche businesses. One girl, she, uh, does tutoring for, for getting into college, college admissions stuff. Um, another guy, yeah, like all, all these interesting things. One guy helps like with productivity because I want to show you uh, more paths to success versus not just my students, uh, but like I want to show you just all of the varied ways uh, that can work. So I will, I'll work to start doing more of those. I'm so like all over the place in my life that like it's, it's like people send me a Calendly link and they're like, oh yeah, let's schedule a call. And I'm like, ah, fuck, dude, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. Like I, I, I do this entrepreneur thing to not be locked down to a freaking uh, calendar. Like I might hop in my truck and go for a road trip two days. And I don't want to have like a call like that I'm supposed to do. It's funny, but that's, that's literally like the lifestyle freedom that I value in this. Um, cool. So Alex says he loves these live chats. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, Jeremy says, uh, your problem is that you don't have experience with weight loss. Is that a self limiting belief? I mean, you know, if you don't have a story in it, then obviously you can look around for something that you do have a story in, but there's a lot of spaces that are wide open and they have way less competition. They have way lower competition, like the level of competition, right? So the internet marketing space not only has a lot of competition because of, uh, the scammers, selling go sell my product so that brings in a high volume of competition of make money online people who suck at it right they're new they've never done it this is their first try and they're coming up against me in the ring sorry you're gonna get mike tyson um so there's a large volume but then you also have like the best of the best in the world who are also going at it on their end 
um, the Dan Kennedys, the the Frank Kearns, the Joe Polishes, the the Russell Brunson. Like they're so good at what they do. I mean, Russell Brunson has what a hundred million dollar year company or a hundred million dollar valuation company. How many people do you think he's got hired to go after it? Like Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk has hired a team of 17 or more people to the tune of $50,000 a month to dominate at social and search. You're going to really, really, you want to get in the ring with that? Like, really? Like, this is my approach to doing it. He ain't teaching the tactics. I'll teach you all the tactics, right? So so that's my way of going against it. But I'm bringing a lot of experience with that. So um, it's not a limiting belief. You're, you're being honest. You need to find your story where your story ties into something, whether it's fishing, uh, dressing as like, look at hip hop. So it's, it's where you tie into something that you're passionate about. I don't care if it's gaming. I don't care if it's sim racing. I don't care if it's art, painting, carving. We got one dude, uh, Ruben in the group. He's got a thousand subscribers now on YouTube. He teaches wood carving. English is his second language. And he's teaching people how to carve. Here's how to carve better eyes. Here's how to carve a tree of life. And he's growing a freaking audience because he's just sharing something he's passionate with in the world. Um, so Brent Peluso makes sense. You're going to go into brain health, depression, anxiety, neurohack. That's it. You, you get it, Brent. That, that's, that makes sense. Um, all right. So I think we're, I think we're about out of it y'all. Um, man, so many things popping up here. Yes. The thing I, yes. One thing until successful you finally realize that a lot of work is involved with everything I'm talking about Dwight right now. Um, not until then did you start seeing traction. So it's weird. And we're going to end on this Dwight because it's true. So I remember like almost getting disheartened one night. And so I, I made money in 03 and then that fell apart. So I was, I was essentially direct linking people from MySpace to an affiliate program. Uh, it worked for a bit. I was making good money. I think I made money for about a year. I don't remember the exact numbers. I was making upwards of three grand a month, spending it as fast as it was coming in. Zero went into savings. Um, zero went to list building. Zero went to reinvest into syndicating what was working. It came down to zero. And I was like, man. So I went on a hunt for like six years for shiny object for a magic solution for a get rich quick scheme. I tried network marketing. I tried flipping houses. I tried selling t-shirt. I tried everything looking for that get rich quick. And then Melly and I met and that changed things for me. My why changed. It was no longer, I got to take care of, you know, my man. It was like, I got family coming, right? I got to take care of my lady. Cause that's just one of those beliefs that was programmed into me at a very young age, whether it's true or not, that's just what was programmed into me. I'm the breadwinner, right? Miles brings home the bacon is what my belief was. So when Melly and I connected and it was like, it got real, it got to another level. It externalized the need to actually do what it takes. And I remember getting sad one night and almost like, like, fuck, I just have to do the work. Like, ah, uh, this is going to be so much fucking work. Fuck. I started. That was 2008. I started. Now, 10 years later, I look back and I was the smartest damn thing I did. And you are right. It's been a lot of work. I still work a lot, but I love it. I hope you can feel it in this moment. I really do enjoy this. And when I worked with clients, I loved helping my clients rank, love helping them dominate. When I do my events and my abundance circle, I love bringing these people together. I love seeing the private chefs bring out the meals that are catered to each person. And this person's paleo, so they get a slab of steak. And this person's vegan, so they get something amazing. And everybody's happy and seeing those conversations, those relationships. But I love it. I love it. Making these videos for you, getting the comments and the feedback, even the trolls. I love it right? And it is a lot of work. And it wasn't until I like gave up on the shortcut. And I really truly was like, okay, the shortcut is three years of doing one thing like a boss over and over and over. And sure enough, when we committed and went all in on it, just, you know, I got this little problem. Okay, get that done. Cool. How do I install WordPress? There was no YouTube when I started. There was no fucking YouTube when I started. Y'all can like type into YouTube how to install WordPress and a video will walk you through it. You can type how to change a the theme in WordPress. You can say how to build a funnel on WordPress in YouTube and a video will show you how to do it. Nah, -uh. not when this guy started, none of that, but I still figured it out.
nights, weekends. I had a full-time job. I had an hour and a half commute every single day. Had family responsibilities. Had cousins and primos and nephews all around me. Had a lot of stuff going on. Still figured it out. Forums just figured it out, right? One way or another. And it was that commitment and just, just okay, how do I get the theme installed? Done. All right, cool. How do we post? Okay. How do I write a good headline? Okay. How do I optimize? How do I do keyword research? Okay. And just, just poco, 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 as my friends in Mexico would say, like little, 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 little by little by little, I learned one new skill. I learned and we just kept applying it and I got a little better. And then what happens is you get to the point where you can do your blog post, or you can do your thing. And it like all of a sudden it doesn't take you three hours anymore. You can get it done an hour and a half. You just freed up an hour and a half. A lot of people go, oh, cool. I can go sit on, I can watch Netflix. God, Black Mirror's back on. Good thing. I can binge watch that now because I got the bare minimum done. Nah, I reinvest that time back into what's that next skill I need to learn. And sometimes I went and learned things that they're really not that applicable. Um, but I've learned a few things that that are applicable and that that do help. And and like that really knuckling down for three years. And that's the the challenge to help most people understand is that. The three years, do one thing, go all in it, trust that you'll pivot, you'll find some some unique thing that works. Um, that is actually the shortcut. And that that watching this dude's webinar and then watching this dude's webinar and then buying into this system because it sounds easy and then buying into that thing and then doing the drop shipping, they're doing that. That's the guaranteed to never work program. Uh, how do I know? Uh, 2003 through 2009, that's all I did. And I made, I had in that period of time, I had multiple wins of over 10 grand. Uh, one network marketing company, I shot right to the top and we were in just selling them scams, man, just slanging pyramids. You want pyramid scheme? Got you one, let's do this, right? Found a way, made like 10, 15 grand on that and it all came apart and everybody jumped over to some other thing. All my downline left because there was this new scam that everybody was interested in, right? Like, so I played those games and I made a little money here and there off of it. None of it was like fill up retirement accounts. None of it was buy a 20 acre estate on a lake. What? That's what we got. Like, none of it was buy a second house. None of it's got me shopping for a condo in the tropics for my winter time because I don't really feel like dealing with snow anymore, right? That's the level of life I'm at now because I did one thing over and over for 10 years. Damn, a lot better than trying this, than this, than this, and this, and that scam, and this, and that, and trading, and the and candlestick, and crypto, and blah, blah, blah. like it just never worked long term until I really committed to one thing long term. And the commitment ultimately tied all back to the beginning, the AT, the audience, it's to you, right? And now you're seeing me do it again here. It's 2019. I started this in 2016. Like, I think you can feel and sense that my time and my effort, my energy is truly focused on helping you. Ain't no pitch coming. This isn't one of those webinars. Oh, give them 60 minutes of value and then you transition and then you start the sell and then you you add three bonuses and you value stack and then you price, you add that price up and you anchor a really high price and you bring it back and then you sell them into that high ticket product. Ain't gonna happen. I'm not doing it because I care about you. And I know that 98% of you who buy that thing I sell will do nothing anyways. Well, fuck it. I'll give it away all for free. The 2% of you who are gonna take action can take action and maybe there's a chance that some other percent of that 98% will do something. I don't know, call it a test, but I'm good financially. And it's getting better because somehow when you just give of yourself to your audience, things start to work. Dudes like Matt just drop a hundred bucks on a live chat. I didn't think, I didn't expect that to happen. Some of you, I'm taking the wifey out to Thai food tonight, made some money. You know, I'm, I'm kidding because my, my membership, uh, like my affiliate stuff on this channel, probably gonna bring in 1,500 to $2,000 today. Hands off, whether I did this video or not, but I'm committed. I'm doing the video because I'm here for the long term. I'm not in it for what was. I'm, I'm in it for proving a model here. So that's really kind of um, the greater philosophy. And I think Dwight nailed it, right? It's like, you know, you hit this point where you're like, fuck, it's a lot of work. You look at the pile of steaming shit and it's a big pile of shit full of challenges. Full, it's, it's like swampy bullshit. And you got like a little ass shovel. Like you got a spoon, right? And that's what we start. And the job is to move that mountain over there. Okay. And it's a messy job, but you learn that you can start build a fashion, a new tool. You get better. Your tool gets bigger. And also you get that. And then all of a sudden you're coming up with a dump truck. And that's what we run right now. We got like a bobcat up in here, just lifting it bucket loads. Why? Because I got a team of 15 people helping me at this point, because I got the ability to put 10 grand, 20 grand a month back into my business, right? I'm reinvesting in my business at the rate of tens of thousands of dollars per month. But in the beginning, I had to borrow a hundred dollars to get started. In the beginning, I had to borrow 1200 bucks from my dad to get a Jeep because I sold my car because I was all in on a scam. 
literally i was slanging mlms i was doing the scam i was drinking the kool-aid oh you got to make it to the conference you got to go to national call oh you got to make it to the meetings i was there i was out of money just keep going it'll work so i sold both our cars both of them i had zero fucking cars yo and i love cars like that was an important thing i grew up in the bay area you are what you drive sold them both had to literally had to borrow money from my parents to fly my wife and i back to the airport in oakland to get picked up on my dad to move back in with my parents. Then I had to borrow money to get a car. Then I had to borrow money to get hosting to start over from fucking zero. And I made millions. Ha oh, ha, I can feel it. And I know you can. And that's the point. And that's why I keep showing up because I think at some point you're gonna get it. And, and that's, that's what I'm doing it for. And when you get that it is the long path is actually the slow path, like the hard work is the path and that's okay. And you embrace it and you like start to roll up your sleeves and you show up every day ready because you know that everything you're putting out is for your audience and it's really gonna help those people. And when you really commit to them, like really not say you do, not try to commit, like when you really go all in on them, and I don't care if it's helping them lose weight, I don't care if it's helping them with beauty, I don't care if it's helping like a person with a certain skin type or skin color take care of their skin better because you dealt with that problem all your life, helping with acne reduction, right? Like, like it doesn't matter. Golf, fishing, it could be fishing for catfish, it could be fishing for bash, fishing for trout, it doesn't even matter. It could be all of it, any of it, one of it is enough. And when you really commit to them, it just gets fun. Cause now I'm like having a good time with you, like sharing the stuff and helping you understand what it takes. Like, I love this. And when you get there, the world changes around you. Um, and it, it really is kind of a, when this changes, like this changes and the work never goes away. The work increases, the challenges get bigger. My original challenge of borrowing a hundred bucks from dad wasn't really that difficult. Dad, let me borrow a hundred bucks. I got an idea for a website. I think this one's gonna work. Okay, son, that wasn't tough. How to install WordPress my first time. That was pretty tough. That really isn't tough. The stuff I deal with now in my business, the logistics, the human resources, the getting other people to communicate and work together stuff, that's tough. That's really, really tough. Building systems that can handle scale, that's really, really tough. Um, but I show up every day and still pile of shit. I'm shoveling. I got a pretty good shovel, right? I'm, I'm just like, I show up and I do my work. Um, yeah, goals, find bigger challenges, man. The greatest entrepreneurs on life find the biggest challenges that the most people have and they go right after it. They go right after it. Look what Elon Musk has done and the flack he takes, right? Like uh, a more, a, a better car that's also sexy. Like nobody ever come up with that. Like GM put out an electric car, it was ugly. It was ugly, right? He was like, no, 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 it needs to be sexy. Then it's gonna sell. Like the number of challenges and the haters and all the stuff he deals with, it's crazy. Um, Cool. Well, I'm gonna call it you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, I know you can do it. It really takes shifting this. I'll do a video on all the, all the specific books, the mindset stuff that I've gone through. I'll spend some time journaling about it and come up with it. Um, just go be of service to people. You'd be amazed at what you create. The world can be a better place with you helping others and you will get yours as a byproduct of helping a whole lot of people solve problems, even if that's how to pass level two on some League of Legends or some uh, Fortnite game. I don't even know what the games are, but like even if that's, it's it's really powerful. That's the way it works. So thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Uh, we'll connect again here soon. I'll probably do another live. I don't know, I like these. I like, I feel like unique, things come out of the live that um, I can't pre-plan, that don't happen in my pre-recorded videos. So I, I think this is is working its way into um, my routine. So thank you for being a part of this with me. Thank you for being there to help me with this. Um, because if you weren't here, I wouldn't, you know, I, if, if you didn't need help, I wouldn't be here. So thank you. Appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next video.